Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Drop a comment if you have any questions. What the fuck? She get a... Oh my goodness, what? is that a rat's nest? Hey everyone, I'm doing the fuel filter on my 99 VR4 today. The first thing I need to do is disconnect power to the fuel pump so that I can relieve pressure in the high pressure fuel lines before removing the fuel filter. I'm gonna disconnect the power to the fuel pump and then crank the motor so that the pressure gets out of the front end of the lines. Okay, so I have a custom sound system back here, so it's way different than you guys, but remove your rear paneling. This panel right here, that's where your uh, fuel tank and sending bulkhead unit, all that, that's where it is. So undo these four screws here. A, oh my goodness, what? is that a rat's nest? Oh my god. This is your harness. Thumb tab just like the rest of the car. Push until you hear a soft click. Or a ting, I guess. Wiggle while you pull. So we'll clean up the inside of that connection too, because god damn. Dry crank the motor here. With the fuel pump disconnected and the engine cranking, there should be no more fuel pressure in the front of the lines, and we can proceed. Hey everyone, here are the tools you're going to need for the job. Phillips head screwdriver for the rear sending unit cover panel in the trunk. You're going to need a 3 8 inch drive, assorted extensions, 12 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket, two 19 millimeter open-ended wrenches, a 14 millimeter open-ended wrench, whatever wrenches you need to disconnect your battery terminals, and you're gonna need a torque wrench as well. I recommend actually a 3 8 inch torque wrench and a quarter inch torque wrench. As with any job, you wanna disconnect your negative battery terminal before you get to work. This is uh, Watch Dave make a snuff film. <laughs> <laughs> so, in order to get to the fuel filter, you need to remove the battery. <laughs> Next, we're going to remove the battery tie-down. The factory nuts are 10 millimeters. That's the fuel filter, just behind the battery tray. So that's why we have to remove it. All right, here's the battery tray, connected to the chassis with four bolts. Other two smaller nuts here and here. These hold on to the washer fluid reservoir. I'm using a 12 millimeter socket with an extension. This is the wrong bolt. Three of my battery tray bolts are number four zinc plated bolts. This one is number seven. It's probably important that I source the number four bolt and change it. This one doesn't even look like it has zinc plating on it and if it does it's not doing its job anymore. Now that we got the trailers we're gonna pull it out. To make removal easier, you can disconnect the battery tray from the washer fluid reservoir by removing those two nuts. That way you can remove them as two pieces and access the harness. This harness, there's a tab. Push that tab in and pull and it'll come loose. Now I've got this up and out. I've disconnected the harness to the pump. Alright, you just want to drain the uh, reservoir. This will let us disconnect the hose without spilling everything in the engine bay. You follow these lines here. One goes to the hoses that tie into the wiper sprayers. And then the other is an electrical harness. Here's that harness. Push until you hear a soft click. Pull and disconnect. Oh! So I had a little spill, that's okay. 
go down there and make sure you clean up after yourself. Here is the fuel filter, and boy is it down there. And the fuel filter has the fuel output hose on the bottom. If you see this loop down here, you have the fuel input hose. So the next step is to loosen the top banjo bolt. This is a 19 mil. Now this is gonna be on quite tight. So what you wanna do is take an 18 millimeter open-ended wrench and slide it in. And you wanna use that to hold the fuel filter still while you crank on the banjo bolt. This is just to stop you from ripping the firewall in half, right? Like I don't have to match Jacko's force, I just have to resist it. Beautiful. Okay, once you bust the banjo note loose, get a rag ready, get some gloves ready. You shouldn't leak too much, but there will be some drops. So here's the line here. It runs up like this. So as long as you tie the, you know, the loop that t goes onto the banjo bolt somewhere above that, it won't leak. Here's the all important banjo bolt. Take this loop here. I'm gonna dab it, get any of the drips out, and I'm gonna put the zip tie right through the loop. And then right here, there's a hard AC line. Okay, there you go. All right, now we're gonna do the bottom fuel line. It's a 14 millimeter and then a 19 millimeter for the bigger one closer to the front of the car. And it's just down here. First, you wanna get the 14 on there. You wanna get the 19 on. Okay, 14 mil and a 19 mil on the fuel line. Nice. Okay, we got fuel leaking. Right, now I'll stop it. Once you've busted the line loose with the 14 and the 19, you can reach in with just the 14 and just loosen the nut. Only loosen the flange nut here. You don't want to fully unthread it until the fuel filter is off of the firewall. They're like, oh yeah, you could get our wrench in there for sure. You'll just have to flip it every time you turn it and you can only move it a eighth of a turn each time, but you can do it. <laughs> We've got the banjo bolt line and the send line both disconnected from the fuel filter. So we are now ready to remove it from the firewall. There are two nuts, they're 12 millimeters. It's easiest if you get at them with a socket with an extension. You'll see why in a second you wanna get around this battery stay. We've got to get this line off, so I've got it, two 19 millimeter wrenches. To get this bushing out nice and gently, with the insert out, you can bend it now. Just like that. And just encourage it the rest of the way through. Well, my fuel filter came with a new bracket, but the bracket didn't have the bushing, so I'm transferring them over. This is how you get it in. The flat end faces the firewall. Pinch a little bit of it through so that it's on the lip. It's actually much easier putting them in than getting them out. Boom. So now we're going to put the original hard line on the bottom of the fuel filter with its banjo bolt. Each of these banjo bolts receives two Mitsubishi copper crush washers. So one goes on, then the line, and then a second crush washer. And this will guarantee that you don't have any leaks from the banjo bolts, okay? And you wanna make sure you have this oriented properly. And then the hard line slips into that little notch right there. And the open nozzle right here sits closer to the driver's side or the uh, left side of the car. Okay, so the torque for the two banjo bolts is 23 foot-pounds of torque. Then when you put the uh, firewall bolts in, the service manual didn't list it on the page, but I went and I looked up the thread pitch and the number on the top, and it says it's 8.7 foot-pounds going into the firewall. 
Okay, now we've got our fuel filter reassembled. Just reach on down in here, and then I'm gonna hand thread these bolts in. This is a mistake I made. I highly recommend hand threading the high pressure C-shaped fuel line before tightening the firewall bolts. All right, now we're gonna do the top banjo bolt. The way that I recommend doing it is putting your first copper crush washer on the bolt. Okay, and then keep that bolt tipped like that so you don't ever drop it. Okay, here we are, the most nerve wracking part. So the way I'm gonna do it, I've got this sealed on my finger. It will not come off, okay? So I'm gonna put my finger on that hole and then pop it off. So now I've got that lined up. I'm gonna take this and I've got the other copper crush washer already on the bolt. So it's gonna go through the banjo line, going down and straight through that copper crush washer. And once your hand threaded on, drive it home because you don't wanna lose those babies. Boom. You will torque that to spec, which is 23 foot pounds of torque. That's it. I've re-loosened the firewall bolts because I want some play in the fuel filter in order to get the line reattached properly. Oh boy, I really blew it. I hard secured the fuel filter to the firewall before hand threading the hard C fuel line below the fuel filter. As I started to thread it in, it got a little cross threaded, so it won't thread in properly now. I gotta repair these threads or something. I got myself a thread file here. This is gonna be my first attempt. If I feel like this isn't working very well, I'm gonna switch to a chaser. So the two parts I need to finish the fuel filter are here. This is a thread chaser kit. This here is a brand new fuel line. Look at that. Here is the thread chaser. It's an M14 by 1.5. That's the size of the male fuel fitting. I'm gonna use this thread chaser to make sure that the threads on that male fitting are healthy enough to accept this brand new fuel line that I've got here. So nice and gently, I'm gonna hand thread this on. There we go. Okay, I got a good amount of turns into it. I think two full turns. It seems to sort of get jammed up there. I don't wanna force it on any further. It seems like it'll start. So that's what's important to me for now. Let's see how the threads accept this brand new fuel line. Now, I'm not gonna install it on the filter yet. I'm just gonna try and thread it in very gently. These threads are beautiful. If this doesn't end up working out, what I'll do is replace the fuel line under the car. But ideally, I don't have to do that. So let's see. Oh yeah, right in. Oh, it's a miracle. Oh my God. Yes! I am your master! Ah, oh, such a relief. So, there we go, that's the problem solved. This fuel line is accepting those threads all the way through. Looks like the chaser did the trick. Now that we have the fuel line repaired, we've gotta get the old one out. Looks like I can access this bottom fuel hose without taking the top banjo bolt off, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just a 19 mil here to hold the fuel filter still while I bust this banjo bolt loose. Here's the old threads, just at the mouth there. This new piece has a nice, clean, consistent taper all the way around the edge here. And this one does not, it's chewed up. And so that's why this one threads and this one doesn't. We're gonna take the line, feed the banjo bolt through, copper crush washer on top of the banjo bolt. Got the fuel filter here and we're just gonna thread that in. There we go. 
Moment of truth, we're gonna hand thread this old male fuel line into the new female fuel line. Oh, I got it. Definitely got it. But boy, it was so finicky. It's unbelievable how much focus and attention that took to get it right. It is definitely hand threaded and definitely turned like six or seven turns in all the way now. Man, oh man. Okay, here are the fuel filter firewall bolts. They're nice and clean now. I'm gonna feed them into those threads and unthread them a couple of times, clean it out, make sure everything is nice and clear. Okay, same thing on the other side. Here we are, final step is to tighten down the high pressure fuel line, finally. Oh, it's, it's ready to tighten up. Step is to just snug up these bolts to the firewall, just beyond hand tight. I'm going to separate the battery tray from the washer fluid reservoir to make reinstallation easier. It's these two 10 millimeter nuts at the top. Installing the washer fluid reservoir. This is the harness that clicks into it. Now the washer fluid reservoir is in. We're gonna reinstall its connections. That's the fluid connection. And then we have the electrical connection for the pump itself. All right, now we're getting ready to put the battery and reattach it to the fluid reservoir. Do the four bolts for the tray first, the then the nuts for the bottle. Washer nuts into place. You thread on the securing nuts. These nuts. These nuts. And a 10 millimeter socket to torque them down. So I'm just snug. Thanks so much for watching the video. Boy, oh boy, was that a crazy job. Now that the fuel filter's back in, I can move on to the next stages for the 60K. I'm doing my O2 sensors this week, so be sure to check that out as soon as it's uploaded. And then I'm gonna be going on to the fuel pump, fuel gauge, and fuel pressure regulator before I complete the 60K timing service. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks again for checking it out.